Hey there! Today I'm going to look over the add-on hot loot, go through a little tutorial on how to run it, why you'll want it, what you can use for it, and why is it why is it beneficial for you. Um, so to start off, hot loot is an add-on that's used to enhance your looting ability, specifically adding filters and thresholds of what you actually pick up versus what you don't. One of the first things that you'll want to understand with hot loot is that it is uh, overwritten by the game's main ability to auto loot. So before you can really do anything with hot loot, you need to turn auto loot off. Now an easy thing to uh, create is a macro that'll turn auto loot on and off. This way you can basically toggle hot loot working on and off. As you can see, clicking my macro here and auto loot in the chat log is turning on and off. I'll keep it on off because again, I want my hot loot settings to work but I'll put the uh, the macro script in the uh, the text below so that you can use that. It's a really handy feature just because if you're going in between a raid where maybe you want to pick up everything versus um, old farming, which I'm about to do, will depend on if you want hot loot to actually work or not. So once you install hot loot, you'll have two things that'll be added to your UI. One being the little um, hot loot button up near your map and also this hot loot window. Now we're gonna go through uh, both of these things specifically we'll start with the uh, hot loot interface options first so there's quite a few tabs here I'm gonna go through the ones that you'll really care about and kind of glide over the things that you shouldn't really be needing uh, the first option is that yes you want to have this enabled you can toggle this on and off back and forth depending on if you're again wanting to put any thresholds on but I think the easiest way is just to keep that enabled and then create a macro for your auto loot feature other than that, you can pretty much just keep the settings I have here for advanced options for later on. And then the two things you might want to use are uh, the features of auto-close and skinning. Auto-close is nice just because it will, again, kind of pick up everything you want to pick up and then close the loot window all automatically, so you don't have to worry about closing all the windows. It's not a huge time saver, but it is kind of nice. The nice thing is that if you do want to see what you're not picking up, you can always uh, Put a modifier key to the auto close that way um, if maybe you want to check what's on that glinting mob you can the only caveat is that you want to make sure your modifier key is different than your auto loot modifier key if it's the same you'll basically auto loot and um, pick up everything when really all you want to do is just see what's on the ground skinning mode is potentially nice However, as you go to enable it, you will see this big warning with red text, and for good reason. If um, In hot loot, if you have items on a mob that you can't pick up, it'll just leave it there in the mob, so you can decide later, hey, you know what, I want to go pick that up. With skinning mode, what it'll actually do is uh, delete things. So it'll basically like pick up what you didn't want and then delete it. So that way you can skin the mob. Uh, if you're a skinner, then great, this actually is a really nice feature, but if you're not, you may get really pissed off if you accidentally deleted something that you intended to keep, that you didn't know was going to be dropping. So for instance, okay, I'll loot these two guys. Perfect. And you see uh, there was a little uh, box up here for what I looted, we'll go through that in a second. But then there's still glinting stuff on this mob, and that's because again, I do not have skinning on, so the items that I didn't want to loot will stay in here. The loot monitor tab is all about this green box up here. As you saw when I looted these two creatures, I got a little bit of uh, gold, a silver notification here. And basically, this will scale, or not scale, but it will list all the things that you are picking up that meets your threshold. So you can turn that on or off. I like it just because it's a nice, very visual way to um, see what I'm picking up. But everything you pick up obviously will still appear in your chat log, so not a huge deal. I like it though. Um, the general is really just uh, some basic, um, I guess, UI elements. And then the appearance tab, you can really customize it to be however you want. Um, it'll default pretty small. Uh, I increased the size a lot just because eh, I wanted it. I have enough screen space. Why not take it all up with add-ons? Moving on into the loot filters tab, this is where the majority of the magic of hot loot comes from. Um, on the, uh, there's a lot of selectors here. Basically, anything that's checked is what you will pick up. So in the general uh, column, I guess, or a section, you have um, 
some pretty standard just general things you could pick up. The only one I would leave unchecked is junk. Um, obviously you want to pick up gold, it doesn't take up any bag space and just leaving it on the floor is stupid. Currency is kind of the same way only because it doesn't take up your bag space so you might as well pick it up uh, for even if you're not going to use it, it doesn't really matter, it'll just stay over here and be alive. Um, and then quest items, you're not really going to come across these often but just in case you do it's nice to have them and it's easy to just delete an item versus missing uh, an important quest item along the way so keep that checked. For the professions, uh, this will loot things that fall into different categories. And so, yes, you could uncheck some things here, like maybe cooking recipes and fishing. But what I found is most of these items will sell for a decent penny on the auction house since they're all crafting materials. So I would recommend always having these on, just because even if they're low level items, you can still make a good amount of gold by selling those on the auction house. And then lastly down here, you have common drops. I turn off anything related to potions or flasks. They don't really sell at a high margin on the auction house. They don't vendor for much either, and they take up a lot of space in my inventory. Uh, so I just don't even worry about them. I will keep the elementals and motes of harmony though, just because motes are really great for professions, personally. And then elementals are again, kind of the auction house reason of you can sell them for a pretty penny, so you might as well pick them up. They added a timeless aisle tab uh, with the new Timeless Isle that basically is just what type of buff items do you want to pick up? If you're unfamiliar on the Timeless Isle, you can get random um, items from mobs that will give you different buffs like uh, mastery or healing. But they're dumb because they um, they don't sell, they're soul bound, and the only way to get rid of them is to either use them or manually delete them. So I don't like them cluttered up my bags, I turn them off. I will keep the rep meat though. That's uh, basically like quest items that you can turn in for timeless isle tokens. So that's uh, these are my settings. Item quality is now um, kind of two of the three filters that you'll come across with Hot Loot. And this is by what type of quality of item do you want to pick up? Right now I'm picking up anything that's uncommon or higher. Primary reason here being is that most of the stuff I'll pick up are either uh, by non equip so I can send them to my enchanter to disenchant, or if they're rare and higher, they're probably buy none pickup, but they sell for a decent amount. Most rares, uh, even at like level 60 or so, are gonna sell for five gold upwards. So it's okay for me to pick those up and I'll just sell those at a later time. I do not pick up most white or gray items unless it passes my value threshold, which we'll talk about in just a second. And then there is this checkbox for automatically selling your poor items. Um, I have a different add-on that does that for me, so I'm not going to worry about it too much, but it is a nice feature if you don't have an add-on that does this for you. And then lastly, you can put in an item level of uh, basically equal, greater or equal to this number, you won't or you will pick up items here. So let's say you are an enchanter and you're just trying to get a certain uh, disenchantable mat, and so you know only item level 400 and higher is going to have what you want, you can put that threshold in here and then you um, will only be picking up any items that fall under these categories with an item level of 400 or higher. Alright. Um, no, hopefully I didn't ruin that. Perfect. Uh, include and exclude tab is if you want to manually add things to your pick up or don't pick up list. The reason why you might want to do this specifically in the exclude list is you may be picking up a lot of crap that falls under uh, a green or blue item quality. For instance, on the Timeless Isle, oh, I don't have my example here, but there are these uh, uncommon, so green, quality items that drop, that like heal you over time. They're pretty much worthless, but, and again, they don't sell for anything and they're soul bound. So I said, you know what, I don't even want to um, loot them. So it's pretty easy to add things to the list um, you just click in and then you can shift click anything over so for instance if I don't want to pick up any singing crystals which I don't I can add it over here press ok and then voila it's added to my list if you make a mistake and you're like oh no I do want to pick those up it's also really easy just click the item remove it from the list and then voila so you can do that for adding or or excluding or including items uh, specifically, you'll really only use this for exclude, but there is an include list as well in case you're looking for certain gray items. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the value threshold is my favorite because I use Hotloop mainly for uh, 
assistance in gathering gold when I'm doing a lot of low-level stuff. And so what I have here is saying, okay, I told you in the item quality tab I don't want to pick up poor or common items. However, if the vendor for five gold or more, pick them up. Because at that point, I'm kind of looking at the inventory space like rent. Um, and so if something will at least sell for five gold, <clears throat> I'm okay with it taking up an, items, or an item slot. You can do that for a lot of different types. Um, however, this goes the threshold goes off of vendor item or vendor value. And most of these crafting mats are going to sell for a lot more in the auction house. And maybe you won't even sell for crap to the vendor. So be weary about using uh, the value threshold with the materials, but absolutely go to town in the quality. And then you can also use quantity value here if you want. What this basically says is if an item can stack, then we'll kind of look at the potential of um, how many could fit in one item stack to match against the threshold. So if we have a feather that maybe only vendors for one gold, Without this checkbox, it'll say, well, it's not five gold, I'm not gonna pick it up. But if it stacks in lots of 10, then, and I have the quantity value checked, it'll basically say, okay, yes, it's only one gold now, but it has the potential to be 10 gold in one stack, which does meet the five gold threshold. So I'll pick it up. Uh, that's actually a nice feature, and I'm gonna turn it on for this little run, just because I've run this uh, set that calls enough that there's a lot of crappy feathers and stuff that might actually meet that threshold. I'm interested to find out. In the extras tab, you really just have the loot history here. I don't use loot history, but it is a nice um, feature if maybe you're trying to uh, figure out how much of an item you get from a run. This will track items as you pick them up and also the quantity of them. Um, so let's see if I can get some things to show you here. Um, so let's say you're running a couple of dungeons. You're like, hey, I want to know how much cloth I'm getting per dungeon per run. Maybe you're doing some analytics there. Uh, just silver, awesome. And again, it'll display up there on the hot loot. I have everything sent to or set to the largest right now. Uh, most people will probably want that to be a little smaller, but eh, I don't mind it. All right, just kill some things. I'll loot. Perfect. So I got six nether weaves, as you can see, and I have six in my bag. And then down here, it'll show you, hey, you picked up six nether weaves so far. So it's nice. I don't use it, so I hide it, but um, I do enable loot history. It doesn't come default like that. So it's it's if you want to use it, it's there. Um, and then you can also put a loot notification on, which is basically you set a list of items the same way that you would do it exclude or include list. And then whenever you pick it up, it'll play a sound. Uh, I haven't found a real need for it yet, but it's available if maybe you're just looking for one really rare thing and you want to know when you pick it up, it's there. Uh, the help tab is nice. It has an FAQ kind of for the different tabs. It goes through how you use them in a little bit of detail, but you should be good after this video. About section, don't need to worry about too much. And then there's profiles. So a profile is where you can basically set up some, all of your custom configurations you can save to a profile. So let's say you want to have one for just running low level dungeons like this, where it's like, hey, I want to pick up crafting mats, and that's kind of it. Maybe I'm just here to pick up nether weave. I can set that as a profile and save it. And then maybe have a different profile for my disenchanter, who he only wants to pick up stuff of item level 400 or higher, because that's the only materials that he needs to level his enchanting. So be it. I can set up a lot of different profiles and run them here. I haven't done that yet, just because I'm really only using hot loot for this for one purpose, and that's lower level dungeons. But um, it, it's there in case you want to run a couple of different profiles. So all in all, hot loot is really really nice. Um, specifically, if you set your um, auto close to like uh, control, because my auto loot is shift. This way, I can control click and it won't close the, the window, and I can see what I'm missing out on. And so in this instance, well, this is gray items, and it does stack, but uh, let's see, four are selling for 47 silver, and it stacks in lots of 20, so this is only gonna go for, I don't know, about mm, two or so gold, and that doesn't meet my five gold threshold, even with the quantity items, so I'm not gonna pick up these feathers. Same thing with this trash, only sells for one gold, so blah, don't need it. Now. Let's say you're deciding, you know what, I do want it. You can always um, shift click to auto loot 
um, if you've set that as your default in the um, interface menu, or you can click specific items um, by control looting. I'll show you what that looks like. Hopefully we'll get something here. Nope. All right, kill some of these dudes. Perfect, okay, we still have a lot of loot here. So I'll control click to bring up the loot menu and I can see, hey, what else is here? And let's say, you know what, hey, I really do want these scrolls. I didn't know they were here, so I'm just gonna loot it by clicking it. And then I can add that to my include list in case I wanna keep picking those up as we go along. So I would go over to my include exclude and say, hey, I want to start including these. Shift click it over, press okay. And now it'll be my list and I can start picking those up. I don't want those because they're worthless. So I'm gonna remove that, but that's how you work hot loop. Overall, it's a really great add-on, especially if you're gonna be running a lot of things or searching for gold, doing a lot of gathering, anything along that lines. If you have any questions about hot loot or have any other recommendations for add-ons, let me know. Hopefully this helps. And until next time, good luck in your gold farming. Adios.